every step you sprint, from acceleration all the way through the end of 100 meters or 200 meters or you name it, you need to apply enough vertical impulse. Impulse is the product of force and time. It's force applied for a period of time. You need to apply enough vertical impulse to support your body weight so you don't crash and to lift your center mass into the next step. So you need to apply enough vertical impulse to support your body weight over the course of a step, of a contact in a, in a flight time. So as you go faster, as you run faster, we'll talk about this momentarily, the contact times get shorter and shorter. They get briefer and briefer. You have less time to apply force. That means as the contact times get shorter and shorter, the force has to get bigger and bigger. The amount of vertical force you apply with every step gets bigger and bigger. Likewise, if you take two athletes and everything else being equal, the guy, the guy who's faster applies more vertical force than the guy who's slower. So shorter contact time, more vertical force, faster speed. We can summarize it like this. Two studies from my mentor, Dr. Peter Wen, uh, basically established uh, this conceptually. Again, we see on a graph on the left, speed in meters per second, everything from a slow jog all the way up to an elite level sprint, shorter ground contact times. On the right, vertical force normalized to units of body weight, if I weigh 200 pounds, which sadly I do, one body weight is 200 pounds, two body weights is 400 pounds, three body weights, 600 pounds. This is a little bit of a simplification, but you get the idea. Faster speeds, it's not just more force, it's a greater rate of force application. More force applied faster. And again, for those of you that do some strength and conditioning work, that doesn't come as a surprise. The stimulus you're chasing isn't just strength per se. Most of the time, it's rate of force application because that's what transfers to athletic performance. Now, if we look at what's happening with every step and we look at a competitive sprinter who can reach 11 meters per second, it's over 24 miles an hour versus a, a team sport athlete, an athletic non-sprinter. We look at the vertical forces on the y-axis here, again, normalized to weight of the body or body weights. We have contact time on the x-axis. What's interesting is it's what's going on in the second half of ground contact in the vertical direction. During my last talk last hour, we talked a little bit about this being different in a horizontal direction. But in the vertical direction, from here to here is no different between those that are team sport athletes and of average speed versus those that are elite sprinters and really fast. So what's going on from here to here in the push, not much different. But what's going on during the first part of ground contact is very different. People who are faster apply more force in the first half of ground contact time than people who are not as fast. Again, this rate of force application, the difference between really fast and not as fast, the difference in that rate of force application is in how they're striking the ground, strike mechanics.